I have here a selection of MSI motherboards for Intel Rocket Lake 11th Gen and also a very interesting 360mm liquid cooler. We'll come to that later. Ranging from the £170 Mag B560 Tomahawk Wi-Fi through the £215 Mag Z590 Torpedo, moving up to the £300 Z590 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. Then we have the £360 EK version of the Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi, i.e. you get a monoblock and a pressure test of your loop. And then we end up here with the £440 MSI Z590 Ace. The B560 Tomahawk is interesting, it's cheap. It's a B chipset, therefore it doesn't support CPU overclocking, so it's no match for a K SKU processor. On the rear I.O. we've got a decent selection of headers and connectors, including graphics output, loads of USB, surround sound audio, Wi-Fi. We've got three M.2 slots, we've naturally got full support for graphics, but realistically no one's going to put a graphics card down there. It's all about the main slot there. Although this is a budget model, you can see, for example, the chipset cooler is held in place with plastic pop pins, but the VRM heat sinks are screwed down. So relatively cheap, but not, thankfully, a piece of junk. Good to see that down at the budget end of the scale. Then we move up, 45 pounds to this torpedo. This is a Z590 model, but look, it's the same bleeding motherboard. It's just the same. I mean, it's a different color, sure, but the layout and such like, it just looks almost identical. Ports and connectors, and by eye, the VRMs are pretty much the same. When we go around to the rear I.O. Yep, all right, you get things like an extra ethernet. But basically, very similar motherboards. There you're paying for the Z590 chipset. So that is your entry level for overclockers. Moving up to the £300 gaming carbon Wi-Fi. So we've got the carbon-esque shrouding. We've got some really chunkier heat sinks on the VRMs. We can see the VRMs are starting to look more substantial. We've got a whole host of six laid down SATA connectors. The rear I.O. panel, it's basically full. There's a little gap there where we could have added maybe a couple more USB but that is looking like we want to see it. And if we step up another 60 pounds, yes, that sounds quite expensive. We're now looking at a 360 pound model supplied by EK. So it's the same gaming carbon Wi-Fi minus the VRM heat sinks, but with the inclusion of a monoblock for your CPU and VRM cooling. I received the Z490 version of this very same board from EK pretty much a year ago, and I did something with that. The idea with the MSI Z590 Carbon EK is exactly the same as it was with the 490 version, it's to build a full custom loop PC such as this, which consists of a Cooler Master Mastercase H500M case, processor, Intel Core i9-10900KF, motherboard, MSI, MPG, Z490, Carbon EKX, memories, G-Skill Trident Z Royal, DDR4-4000, Graphics card is a Palette RTX 3080 with an Alpha Cool Ice Block GPU block, the distro plate at the front is by Barrow. The pump is a DDC from EK. We have a 360mm radiator from EK. In addition to the case fans, we have four EK VADA RGBs, 120mm. The fans are controlled by this EK Connect unit. And frankly, we deserve some points for rarity on that front alone. Power supply is a Seasonic Prime Titanium. The loop fittings are by Alpha Cool. The tube is Alpha Cool. The coolant is EK Cryofuel Mystic Fog. So we have a full custom loop system, which obviously is an aesthetic thing, but it also provides decent cooling. And naturally, you get a load of RGB. And if you don't like RGB, you can always use the software to set it to white. So that's what the Z490 is all about. And quite clearly, the EK Z590 is going to be more of the same. And then we come to the premium motherboard, the £440 Ace, which is a substantial piece of kit. We've got 16 90 amp stages, which is frankly all the power in the world. 
It's an eight layer PCB. The Z490 Ace was a six layer. Frankly, the six layer was fine. This is just more of the same. And when we turn to the rear IO, you can see where some of the money's gone because we've got dual mini display ports and dual Thunderbolts. So you can do display pass through should you want, add your graphics card into your display ports. And that means your Thunderbolt's giving it the full everything if you want to power Thunderbolt monitors. So that motherboard has frankly bells and whistles galore i'm hoping i'm going to get to do a review of this board very soon because of the various boards i've seen so far this is certainly at the interesting end of the scale and then we come to the 360 mil cooler let's take a look at the mag core liquid k360 it's a 360 mil all-in-one cooler the name is unfortunate because it's very similar to a cooler that james reviewed a little while ago and he slated that was msi trying to be clever they had as i recall the pump was in the radiator one of those let's get around the ace tech patents kind of things this is an ace tech cooler ace tech seventh gen so we've got a 360 rad we've got three of these msi torx 4.0 fans they're 120 mil they have arg lighting so ARGB connector on each of the fans and then there's a three-way Y cable which can go to the uh, motherboard and then we come to this which contains another fan that's a 60 mil an MSI Torx 3.0 fan that huge thing on top of the pump is an LCD. It's configurable by uh, MSI software, so it can give you presumably uh, temperature readouts as a system information, and then the shroud snicks into place. You won't be surprised to learn that you get all the mountings that you would expect for Intel and AMD. It has to be said that an Ace Tech pump with some standoffs, with a fan, with an LCD, is a monstrously tall package. I mean, and then with the shroud as well. vertically it is absolutely enormous the thing of course is that that fan there is acting as a downdraft it's sucking from the top blowing from the bottom and the idea is that it moves air around the cpu socket so hopefully it's going to help the vrms because our problem with liquid cooling is it removes airflow from directly around the cpu you're relying on let's get the orientation correct the rear case fans typically here Perhaps you have case fans here, but air within the CPU socket through your VRM coolers can often be very low. How much does it cost? It's currently listed at £240, which makes it the most expensive all-in-one cooler that I've ever come across. Nonetheless, I'm going to give this a good shot during my testing for Intel 11th Gen Rocket Lake. I'm going to see what this cooler can do. Admittedly, that was a whistle-stop tour of these five motherboards. Realistically, it's four because these two are variants of the theme and a cooler because I've got to get back to my Rocket Lake testing. <laughs> 